Hello everyone, my name is Pillar Pilot, and today I'm just going to give you a quick run through on the INS in the Collie Marta Concord. We'll only do the pre-departure stuff, as that can sometimes be the most daunting, daunting. Once you're up in flight, it's everything you've already done. But today I'm basing my tutorial off the Concord main flight from Heathrow to JFK. We're in the Collie Marta Concord version 2, and there's been lots of stuff floating around saying you should use the Philips Siva Payware INS. You can. The problem with that is it can go wrong sometimes and confuse it because it doesn't always link up properly. And definitely for version 1 of the Collie Master Concord, that was the one to use. But now we're moving into version 2, uh, which we now have. It's not what I would use anymore. You can use it. it you know, it's, it still definitely works. But I find there's lots of bugs, such as when I've put in the ninth waypoint and we go back to 1, it sometimes messes around and goes wrong. So it can be quite bad in that respect when it goes stuff like that because it can ruin your whole flight and it makes flying concord a guesswork almost you know will this flight work so what i found to be the best over the time i've been doing it is to use the in aircraft one especially for version two if you're using version two of polymass concord use this tutorial i'm about to run through today if you're using version one carry on using the philips seaware Siva, because the ins in that requires you to use the philips Siva as it's not detailed enough so we're gonna hop straight in. If you're using version two, continue on with this video. If you're using version one, continue using the Siva Philips Payware. As you can find tutorials online, such as 104th Maverick, who does a great tutorial. So hopefully in this video I'll answer a couple of questions I had that make it difficult to use this aircraft. So if we up inside the flight deck, I'm not using track IR today to make things easier. So what's just happened is I've turned on the batteries. If we up back into the uh, engineers panel. I've turned on the batteries down here, because otherwise the aircraft rolls away. What you might want to do is turn on some lights, so this is sort of a startup tutorial, but mostly focusing on the INS. So what I first do is I turn on the panel lights there, boost up the panel lights, boost up the panel lights, hop into the first captain seat, look down here, you want to dial this dial up, it brings those lights on, you want to dial this one and this one up, and you get some nice lights there. We then want to look up here, you can dial this one, sorry not that, dial this up a bit and you get a bit of light there. Look on the overhead panel, turn up the glare shield, centre console, centre dash, on roof, all up. And now you get a nice glowing flight deck. You can do the same on the first officer's side, so that his instruments light up if you'd like to have it looking the same. There we go. So. We run through the checklist that can be provided with this aircraft, but my first recommendation is to go to the aircraft, doors and ground, you want to connect your GPU, your door, and your stairs straight away. They're the first three things I do. They're on the parking brakes, so we're not going to roll away, because you want my, what, when you first load in in Congolese Marta, you'll notice you start rolling away. Make sure you have your parking brakes set. If it is set and you're still rolling away, don't worry. What you need to do is you need to switch battery on, battery on, and that gives electrical power to keep the brakes on. If you don't do this, it will roll away through the terminal. When you spawn at stand 419 or 421 at Heathrow, there is definitely a slight incline um, to the ground, so you will roll. So watch out for that. Right. Safety checks, you can run through them if you want to. Um, it's good practice to learn where everything is. But for me, it's all, if you load in cold and dark, it will be set in the correct position. Only thing that isn't set in the correct position, as far as I know, is the um, afterburners. So what you want to do is just literally, I have it binded on my throttles, um, to do so, to bind stuff to your throttles, go into settings, joystick, throttles 1 and 2, and um, you through here you can go on to stuff. So for me, I want it set to the button on the right side, button 4. So what I went is went, go here, type in a random letter, and then close it, and you get the nice, neat arrange, arrangement here. You want to head into the Collimata settings, and make sure you set up the controls to what you want from there. So bear with me, I've got to find them. I'll return when I find them again. Right there in front of me, of course they were. There we go, so we go to Collimata, and then uh, you can you know, you go through everything you want for here. But if you go to Collimata, Concord FXP, AP, you've got one auto throttle main toggle, that's one. Auto throttle pilot, if you go to engines, you've got the toggle reheat switches. They're the ones you want to set up so that you can just click when it comes to braking, you know, going supersonic and whatever. 
you can just click and it'll set it up. So that's definitely what you want to set. Right, so we'll continue on with the checklist. I just thought you should definitely know that. It makes it so much easier. Setting custom views up, that is something you want to do. I have a tutorial on my channel, um, which you should go check out uh, if it's your first time, because it makes things, you can just click, click buttons and move around the flight deck. It makes it so much easier. There are these buttons down here, which do move you around, but if you don't want to be clicking, you just want to have the numbers on your keyboard set to them. I recommend setting up custom views. So with your safety checklist, you can run through them, as I said, but um, the really one you want to be starting doing, if you want to get flying, is the preliminary cockpit checks. So ground power, we did that by going here, onto the aircraft, doors and ground, and setting it all up. We did that through there. Main batteries, we turn them on to stop it rolling away. So we've done the top three already. What we now need to do is get into the actual switching of the aircraft where we start setting up the departure. So we do our equipment bay cooling switches. So we go one, two, one, two, and switch them all on. There, see how they're labeled here nicely in this little box. You'll see the dial increasing and the lights go out. That's equipment bay cooling system. We then want to go to our oxygen panel. I have a little button set to it. Sorry. There it is. And you can flick the gate out of the way and flick it on like that. The noise is quite loud back here because the equipment cooling is all on. So you flick the oxygen on like that. Don't forget to do that, otherwise you'll have difficulty. Next one on the list, drain master heaters. Looking onto the overhead then, these switches here. Click them twice. Set them into the on position. There is an on position, I think, at the top. I switch them twice, that's always how I've done it. Um, so I do it like that. Next one, INS, select a line. So we now get into the little bit of the INS thing, which is the most complicated bit about starting up Concord. Um, so that's why I'm making this tutorial focus around it, but it is a startup tutorial to get you running. We're not on VATSIM today, so we don't need to call clearance or anything, but if you were on VATSIM, um, after you've run through this, you'd be calling clearance. It does have labels on the checklist. So, looking down into our INS then, before we start programming it, which we'll get doing in a minute, we switch it round on this little dial. This changes you to different settings. The DRSTSTS, this one here, but we're on currently, gives you information about the alignment of your IRS. The wind tells you the wind at your current location. The distance and time tells you the distance and time, funnily enough, to your next waypoint. If you head to the waypoint page, you can select and program in different waypoints. If you head to the position page, that's your current position. This is quite important for the alignment stage we're about to do now. So we put it to the pause position. Through pause, we can see it's got an automatic position given to us. If we go on AVI tab, and I've got Navigraph at the moment, but if we head to Heathrow, because that's where we are, you can do it for any airport you're at currently. You want to go to airport, and you want to go to the parking stand coordinates. So it should be, it's one of these. One stand 419, by the way. So looking for it. Not them two. So we'll close them to make sure I don't get confused. Maybe it's this one. 419, there it is. 415 through 420, one stand 419. The coordinates for this stands are shown here, 5127.7, 5127.6, that's fine, and 0027.6, 0, 0, 0, 0.7, it should be 0.7, but if the aircraft in this case is giving you this, this is the accurate, accurate one, sometimes it can go wrong, so I always, um, I always make sure I check though with the charts as to what it says it is. So now we know this is correct, we can hop into the engineer's seat back here. Look down to the left and we see our INS 1, 1, 2 and 3. We want to set them firstly to the standby position, all three. Then going in the correct order, doesn't necessarily make a difference, but um, I would make sure it's so that you know you get all three done, because you don't want to forget one. You can then set them to the align position, which if we zoom in, is the top position, pointing north. So we're going to set them to the align position, which go 1, 2 and 3. We get three lights flashing. It'll take about 10 minutes, and after 10 minutes, you'll get a green light. So I will show you that once we finish the rest of our startup. Then we move through the next checklist, air data computers. So looking to the panel pedestal below us, we go one and two. Air data computers now on. They're our navigation. They're quite important, so don't forget them. Look to the emergency equipment. We can check that stuff like the uh, oxygen masks. If you look down here, you can click it. You'll hear like a breathing. You can check that. And then emergency equipment wise, you can do like a check, look. You get all the warning lights come on. Fire lights. All the noises. Check. Emergency equipment's been checked. 
We now look to the overhead and turn on the no smoking and seatbelt lights, and we finish our preliminary cockpit checks. Moving to our before start checklist. Now, it doesn't specify when you should program the INS. For me, I tend to do it either at the end of this one, um, but what you do want to do is do it during the 10 minute alignment process. It takes about you know, 5 minutes to program the INS, and then about 5 minutes to run through the rest of this. So, don't wait till they've aligned to then begin programming. Don't worry, you can't really mess up the alignment as long as you follow the steps properly. So what I often do is that now at this point, start programming the INS, because it's by far the most lengthy um, thing you can do. So, I will put in the coordinates for the waypoints um, into the link, into the description, so that you can do it and follow me through on this. So if we zoom in, we're nice and centred over it. We switch this to waypoint here. We're selected on, this is our dialer, this changes our waypoint number. So this is like scrolling through the flight plan on A320. The waypoint 1 is our first waypoint. So once we take off from the runway, of course, we'll follow our SID departure. So we have a look at Abby Tab. On a normal day at Heathrow, in the, um, sorry, wrong one. In the Concorde, you'll depart on the Compton 3 Golf or 3 Foxtrot off 27 left normally. 3 Golf. So that entails going to Compton. The end of the did is arriving at Compton. So Compton is our first waypoint. So what you want to do is your first waypoint will be Compton. You'll follow the departure through all the navigation aids. Compton will be your first waypoint. So we know Compton is our first waypoint. So our first waypoint, fully enough, we want to program it with Concorde. Mine has come programmed in with this route. Not the exact same, but a different route I flew earlier in the day. So that's why. Ignore If you ha don't have any numbers in here, don't worry. So, because we're in 3D, of course, if you use the Philips C verb before, you normally can use keyboard mode and type it. In the aircraft, we can't, so we have to program it in manually. So what we want to do, make sure we're in waypoint 1. We then need to click 2 to select north. It wipes the numbers. So that's selecting north or south. This is for the coordinates we're typing in, of course. So coordinates-wise, this will select if we're north or south of the you know, equatorial lines, and that's what this is quite important for setting up with. So. We select that we're north. Now for our first waypoint, we're going to program in Compton. So the coordinates for Compton, as will be in the link in the description, you've just got to type them in in this order. Are 5, 1, 2, 9. And then you don't need to type the point, you just want to type all the numbers. So the point's already there, so you just 5129.5 in there. We now want to do west, so we type 4 to select that we're now on this one. 0. Zero. And remember to take your time with this because it's quite laggy. If you time type it too quick, it will lag out and you won't get all the waypoints inputted. There we go. And now we want to click insert. Bam. And waypoint one. You'll see the zeros go away because they're not relevant in this case. Bam. So now we have waypoint one inputted. Now we dial the dial across to waypoint two, and we repeat the process. So waypoint two is Malby, which is our next waypoint. Off. This is for the Concorde JFK route. So this is the one it would actually fly. Um, so the order of waypoints are the proper ones that Concorde would use to fly. Uh, I will put in a full information and a link to a website that describes all the other routes Concorde might fly. But uh, here we go. So then waypoint 2. We're now going to type the same thing again. So 2 for north. Waypoint 2, Malby. 5135.6. North. West. 0, 0. 203.7 and then we insert that. Waypoint 3 again, I'm just repeating the same process over and over again, but I'm going to do all of them so you can follow through with me. North 5119.5. This is about the maximum speed you can go, otherwise it lags out. So you just want to take it nice and slow, making sure you get. So there you go, I tried to click it too quick then, we didn't get the zero. Just make sure you get all the waypoints inputted properly and in order. If you don't, it will skip them as I keep saying. Don't let that happen. It's a bad moment when you take off and realise you've not programmed in the correct waypoints. Make sure you click insert every time. And then I'm just scrolling through. Waypoint five, five, one, 
zero, zero, zero. West. Zero, zero, eight, zero, zero, zero. Insert. Waypoint six. All this time, by the way, the INS are aligning, so there's no rush or no danger that we're going to run out of time. We got ten minutes, so all good. If you're on VATSIM, do all this before you contact the controller, because with Concord, even if you're going off zero nine, you'll be using a Compton departure and then following this route, so you can you can still carry on. They shouldn't really controllers shouldn't change your route ever. If there's an event on, they might change your route. But in Concord, they should never really change your routing from the one you filed, because that's the official Concord route that allows you to go supersonic without getting in the way of people. Right. Oh, did I mess up there? I think I did mess up. Let me just check my waypoint. So, waypoint one, Compton. Waypoint two, Malby. Waypoint three, Kessup. Waypoint four, Merley. Waypoint five, Leslu. Waypoint six. Ah, yeah, there we go. I messed up there. Waypoint six is now a. I just need to change that. Apologies, I've messed up slightly there. <laughs> so, waypoint six is five zero four one zero west one five zero zero point. Oh, sorry. Clear that. Clear. Waypoint six was. Waypoint five is that one. Waypoint six five zero four four one zero west zero one five zero zero point zero insert. Waypoint seven then, sorry. Apologies, I did it slightly wrong order there. If you follow the link in the if you follow the description, the order that the waypoints are inputted in there is the correct order. I've just uh, not followed it properly on here. Waypoint 8 then. Turn the page. I have it written down. Um, I wrote it down because uh, sometimes I forget them and uh, it's easier to have them in person. So, waypoint 8, north. 5030.0. West Z zero three zero 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 oh it hasn't I have to go for that one again five zero if you make a mistake you have to click clear um click clear and uh it will erase all of that just that one so if you're on number eight it'll erase number eight back to how it was before number nine north. Four nine one six point zero west zero four zero 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 point zero insert. Right now we've done nine waypoints. You see there isn't a tenth here. We can't go any further. We only put nine waypoints in at a time. So what you're gonna do when you're up in the cruise, um, as demonstrated by one oh fourth Maverick, basically this video is just before uh, is on the on the ground stuff for 104 Maverick's video, um, so I'll link that in the description. You want to follow on his video um, from takeoff. Go to the point where it says take off in his video, and then carry on watching it from there, because he describes perfectly what to do during flight. It's just that things have changed slightly with the version two of the Concorde, um, so that's just how to do it. But anyway, you can only put in nine waypoints at a time, so your first nine waypoints the flame will fly. Of course, once you get to waypoint 9, if you don't reprogram, it will come back to waypoint 1. It goes in a loop, in a circle. So what you do is, when you're passing from waypoint 6 to 7, fill in waypoints 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So when we're passing, it'll say from 6 to 7 here. When you see that, you can go down through this dial, go to 1, and start reprogramming waypoint 10 into 1, 11 into 2, 12 into 30, sorry, 12 into 3, 13 into 4, 14 into 5, and you can't do 6. You can't override either of the two that are in the box here. Because the Concorde navigation works by knowing where the last waypoint was and where the next waypoint is, and it draws a line from them. It draws a line between the two, and that's what you follow. It doesn't just go from where I am to the next waypoint. 
um, it does that. So you have to make sure you don't overwrite the previous waypoint. That's quite important. But 104 to Maverick does it in this video, so you'll see it there. Right, now we've done our that, we can now continue with our before start checklist. So, looking to the overpad, the master CBs, set, checked, all. So these are the master CBs, so we want to turn them all on. These white switches, just flick them all on. You'll hear a couple of warning lights. Every bing you hear, that's making these lights um, disappear from the warning panel. Um, so, that's quite important. Corporate preparation, so security, so that's, you know, corporate prep. We don't really need to do any of that, but make sure the door's closed. Um, yeah, DV windows closed. So these ones here, you can close them. You can open them and close them out. And demonstrate and you can click open. It's quite a cool, neat little feature. And you can close it like that. Cool. So, now you've done that, your flight control inverters. So look at the overhead. Flight control inverters. Make sure they're on. You can see that they're on, they're looking down here. Flight control inverters, all on. Flight control augmentation systems, on. That's these here, we can see they're on. These ones here, on. Then we'll turn on our anti-stool systems, that's these two. And the RAD INS switch set to NAD. Set to RAD, so that's here. This one can be set either position. Make sure it's set to RAD for departure. When you then start navigating, so what you do for takeoff, I'll describe it in a minute, um, but make sure that's set to RAD. Instrument transfer switches, that's these down the side. Make sure they're set to the left hand side, that means the captain's side, you want them set there. Altimeter checked and set, so altimeter for Heathrow. I know it's 29986 at this present moment, um, so that's what we'll set there. You can check by checking on the ATIS, or if you don't, if you aren't flying on Batson, Google METAR, E G L L, and it'll come up. Right, the brakes park and checked. The brakes are in park and checked. The nav radios, sorry, I've skipped that slightly. Altimeter check, audio panel com 1, so there, if you are on VATSIM, you need to click blue one. And then suddenly this is now your active frequency that you're transmitting on. So one to two for eight for us. And as soon as you put your push, press down your push to talk button, it will start broadcasting on that. So next one, nav lights. We'll go nav lights on. Throttle masters, main slash alternate, that's these ones. So they're in the main position, perfect. It can be main or alternate. Ground hydraulic, check out. So looking back here. We're looking up to our hydraulic page, our hydraulic page, we can see hydraulic seems normal. And if we look over to the left here, we're looking for the ground hydraulic to be checked out. Yellow, yellow, and off. Perfect. So we want the fuel heaters need to go to auto, so they're here. One, two, three, four. You know you're in the auto position because you can click it again and it'll go one more and that's on. So make sure it's in the auto. Engine recirculation valves, they are sh below it, just below the fuel heaters, they're shut. And the secondary air doors, taking off without a reheat, you put them to auto. Sorry, with reheat, you put them to auto, so we're taking off with reheat, put them to auto. Without reheat, put them to shut. If you're doing like circuit practice or whatever, you might not want, when you're quite light, you might not want reheat. With reheat, it blasts into the air, and when you weigh, you know, 170 tonnes on takeoff, we need to, um, we need to have them. And then the final piece of this checklist is to check that the batteries are on and normal. Battery on and normal. They certainly are. Fantastic. So we can click next. So this one now, it wants us to check that the nav lights are on on the INS. And funnily enough, it's been 10 minutes. So they are. So we now need to dial them to the nav position. So you're literally going to go 1, 2, and 3. And the lights get extinguished. We've put in our waypoint coordinates. We can confirm they're ready for navigation. The nav, the nav light goes out. And they're only checked. Airspeed indicator bugs and pitch bugs. So, airspeed indicator bugs, that's these ones, you can drag them around. That's the altitude bugs, sorry, apologies, on the wrong dial. These are your bugs here, you can click them and then drag them around and stuff um, for your V1 VRs. Um, I normally leave them where they are, it's pretty accurate. Fuel flow bugs, set, so that's down here, the fuel flow. You want to make sure they're on zero, not up one, make sure they're on zero. Uh, and that'll tell you the nice fuel flow meters when you get going. Next, you want to set the clock, famous clock, but one, two, three, go. Whatever you might set that to chrono so that you can do that on takeoff. Load sheet zero fuel weight zero fuel weight cargo position and the fuel remaining are quite important. So if, we, if you're flying to JFK, go to flight preparation, waypoint entry and payload manager. You don't want waypoint entry or flight plan. That's for the people who don't use INS. They're bad. Don't want to do that. You want to be doing it properly and realistically. So you check here. 87 passengers. That's what Concorde would normally carry. So I'm happy to leave that as it is. You then want to head over to the fuel page, 
90 tons, so you can see it'll tell you, if we dial this down, look, it'll tell you when you can no longer do certain things. I normally arrive, if you're good at flying, I'd leave about, if you're, sorry, if you're first time flying, I'd leave it so that you, you have about, you know, 87, 88 tons of fuel on board, maybe even 90 tons of fuel on board, if you're, because you can be quite inefficient flying it. I've flown it a lot, Concorde, so I know what I can do, so I tend to put in about 85 tons of fuel, which says I won't make it. That's it being clever. Um, so, if you want to be safe, play it safe, um, which I often do. I put in 86.6 tons of fuel, so just above the range. I normally arrive into JFK with about 15 tons of fuel, 15, 20 tons of fuel, which gives me enough for one go around. Um, sorry, for which gives me enough for if I don't like the landing the first time, I can go around. I can come back in for the second to try to try there, go around again, so I, I can get three attempts at landing. On the third, I have to land it. So it's not a bad system. Um, yeah, makes it fairly tight, but it always was, so that's fine. Load limits, we've checked. It, it'll tell us if you're out of load limit there. The door lights can be checked. Well, we know that's that's our outside doors. If we have a look outside, you see that door's open. The stairs haven't come up. That's slightly annoying. So don't do that. And then you call for start clearance at this point, and you make sure your master warnings tested. We tested them, and your anti-collision lights looking to the overhead panel go on. Looking into our aircraft then, because if we're starting to push back now, we're going to close that door. Make sure the GPU is still connected. Sometimes it goes off. Make sure it's connected. You know, if you have better pushback, want to set up better pushback, pre-plan your push at this point. I'm happy it always does that. Round the cockpit. That's what Plan acknowledge. Call me through the menu when you're ready. Cool. So that's now set. The throttles are idle position. I'm just checking them there. Idle for mine. You go slightly too. They seem to have a slight glitch, but they'll go into reverse thrust. So just make sure they're in idle and not... Looking back to the engineer's panel then, the engine feed pumps. That's these pumps here. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Superb. So now you have all your engine feed pumps on. You've been clearance to start by ATC. So you're going to move to the next page, the engine start page. It's quite important now, so this is where you have to start actually starting the plane. Before we did that, slightly earlier on the checklist, what I didn't do is if you see here, it tells you to... um set your navigation aids. Where does it say? Nav aids. Nav radios, nav aids. That's what we should have been saying at that point. So I've gone slightly too far at this point. Just here then, you want to call the tug to come and connect up. Ground to cockpit. Tow is driving up. There you go. It takes a while, especially with Concorde, he has to do a lot of connecting up. Uh, so I missed this slightly. So what we're going to do, I'm going to talk through the departure that Concorde takes. Um, it's quite a complicated one um, because of the way everything works. Uh, so I'll be giving a nice run through it. Um, as I say, this is all to tie onto Maverick's video from takeoff. I'm just redoing the new version too. There's a couple of changes and stuff. They are taxi out wise. We should taxi out wise. So two seven left. What you want? If you're giving two seven right, you have to be watching out for the crossings and stuff. Make sure you get up. This you can actually connect. Um, if you don't have Navigraph, you can connect Firefox to it. Or is it Firefox? Fire, Fire something like that. Um, that you can connect up to it. Um, for free charts, Chartfox. That's it. So. We want to tune in the London VOR here. Can you see on the departure, we're going to take a straight line, turn away from the London VOR. When we get to seven miles from the London VOR, turn back okay. right to heading 268. To so dial in 268 there on this heading mode, because that's what we're going to then turn to. You want to keep it pushed in, pushed in. If you pull, when you click track heading, the plane will try and turn towards that 268. If you push it in, the plane will ignore it. So. I want to set this to 256. So note to make sure you note this. You don't. You can engage the autopilot from this 7 DME point from London going this way. You can then engage the autopilot. Before that, there's too many twists and turns you might have to make. I don't recommend trying to turn on the autopilot before that. It's not a good idea. It can go quite wrong. Then we want to tune in the London VOR. So 113 decimal 6. So connected and bypassed you can see it picked it up there. Release parking brake. So it's trying to get us to release parking brake there. I'm just going to ignore this because we should have done this earlier. I made a slight mistake there. I've set 250 knots in my auto throttle. The initial climb for Heathrow is 6,000 feet. If you have ATC online, you want to make sure you only put 6,000 feet in. They get quite annoyed if you don't. Um, so you exceed it. On the first officer's side, then, I'm then setting the next set of stuff. So on this side, what will happen? We take off. You see here? We're basically pointing on the heading of the runway. Take off. This line will start to come across. I'm then going to turn left to follow it. That's at this point here. So we're taking off straight line here. When it starts to come across, that'll be about here. We'll then turn left. This reading here next to it, miles, will then say 7.0. So 
when it says 7.0, we're going to turn right back to 268. And at that point, when we start to make our right turn, I'm going to pull that out. So we're heading to 268 towards the Woodley, v, um, Woodley ADF. So there, if we look down on the pedestal, you want to tune in the ADFs down here. They get tuned in here. So you can tune it in, and it will appear on the navigation display. Oop, you want to make sure you turn it on. Uh, okay, so then it'll clear over here. So it gets a rough idea, but if you're following the headings properly, I normally have this AVI tab up. They've set up little things so you can have it in the aircraft now. We don't need to have it up here. Uh, you can have it in here. Um, so I sometimes leave this on on departure so I can see what's going on. You want to turn right 268. I, s I then set up the next stuff in the first officer's side so that I don't have to look down at the charts and fill it all in from reading stuff. I just then copy what's on his side across onto my side for the rest of the flight. So the plane's now, at this point, flying 268 towards the Woodley VOR. We're going to turn right 281. So we set this up 281 because we're now trying to find the radial 281 towards the Compton VOR. 114 decimal 35. We're going to set that up in this side. But he's now trying to follow the Compton VOR. So when we're heading 268, we're going to... Then, when you're on the 268, you've got a couple of minutes there. You're going to program in 11435 on your side, 268 in the radar on this side, and then as it starts to come across, you can you want to push this in on track heading. You still you've got track heading selected at this point. You're going to select VOR lock, and it's going to try and it's going to turn straight towards the Compton VOR and fly you straight towards it. And it's simple as that. It's fairly simple, um, so you can definitely go through it quite nicely. So we'll go through our engine start phases. I will do this in this tutorial and then cut as we begin our um pass out because uh, up to that point everything is fairly normal. So looking into the engineers panel then before we let him push us back we have to start one engine on stand. The checklist imply you start all of them on stand that is not correct you can start one so you've got to switch on cross bleeds and the air bleeds. Do 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 bleed air source so all of them are open you see the dial spin up. We then want to relight engine number two. Relight switch there you flick it down you can then zoom in on the, f on the pilot's display and see the dial rising. Move to the overhead when it gets to about 20 or 19. There you go, 20. Overhead. Click on the fuel. Just like you do in an Airbus A320. I'm basing this off my experience. I often fly the 321 when I came across to the Concorde. Actually very similar. Made by BEA, who ended up becoming Airbus. So, same principles in the end. So, now look to our overhead. There's quite a lot of noise on the outside view. But what's happening is the engine is now starting. You see the, this dial here is moving up. The exhaust gas temperature doesn't seem to really be changing. Trust me, it is trying to start. The noise, if we go outside, is very loud. That's it starting. Starting this one engine on stand. See the RPM should start to rise. There we go. Starting to boot up a little bit. Ah, it's really wavering across today. Go on, start. Give me a little kick on the throttles, maybe. You have a look back. Sometimes if it's doing this, what you want to make sure is that you did open up all your bleed valves and you did follow your start procedure correctly. Because that can be what's happening. But anyway, looking over the table, then, oh, that's because I flicked on the raw fuel. That's why. Engine number two is what we should have had on. Not engine number one. I flicked on engine number one fuel. Look on engine number two fuel, don't get that wrong. There you go. You'll see the engine suddenly squirts into life now. There we go. RPM's rising steadily. So until this engine started, you can't push back. And that's because you don't have... The GPU would have to disconnect. And you'd lose ground power. You'd be running on the batteries. Not a problem. Probably could get away with just running on the batteries for a bit. I don't recommend it, though. I always... Um, this is a speed bug. I set it to 250. But I would always make sure you start the... Um, start the engine burst on stand, just one of them, um, and then see it's getting to 46% there, the beeping went, and that's all the warning switches for engine number two going off. There you go, once they're all off, head back into the engineering panel, and you want to turn on the generators, hydraulic pumps, um, for each engine, so you go engine number two, hydraulics, one, so just for the engine number two, on. Then for the, en for the generator, you click it twice, till it goes on, it will the lights go out. That's now what we're going to do for that engine. You go to the conditioning valve and you turn it on for that engine. We'll leave the crossbleeds running because we need to start the other engines. So you'll leave the crossbleeds on for now. Now we've got that set up, 
what you need to do is go to aircraft, doors and ground, release the GPU, and you're going to release the parking brake. Starting pushback. So it's now starting pushback. Cool, here he goes. Now we're moving back. We've got the engines running, or one engine running. We're on our way back. We're now going to start up the rest. So we get back into the engineer's panel, repeating the same process twice. I'm going to start one from the other side, so that I then can turn off the cross blades in a bit. There we go, number three. Watch the N N uh, N1 RPM rise. 14, 15, 16, 17, 20. Oh, onto the overhead. Make sure you turn on the right fuel, like I've just demonstrated. Number three. There you go. It begins start up. Yep, number three is on. We're beginning start up. As the plane's pushing back, then what I do is if I'm using track IR, which I will, so bear with me. If you're not using track IR, follow the custom camera tutorial I put up, um, and then just carry on what we're doing using the mouse to look around. But if you want to use track IR like I do, you set it up. You have to download X camera and um, set up the track IR. But now, if I use track IR. It can go a little bit funny there, just when you first turn it on. But there we go, basically I'm just looking at this point, I'm looking left, I'm looking right, I'm clicking, making sure we're all clear around us, and we're all good for departure. So, there we go, engine number two started, so if we head into the engineer's panel at the back here, we're going to turn on the gens for engine number three. Operation complete, set parking brake. It wants us to set the parking brake, pedestal. Parking brake set, I've got a button, I've got parking brake for the TCA add-ons, so we set that. We're then going to start up the next engine, so we look down, relight engine number 4, on. And we're going to turn on the boost conditioning valve for engine number 3. And the engine will happy. Then at this point we're going to turn on the water and galleys power, so they now have power in the galley. That's what we want. He's disconnecting. So yeah, disconnect go to hand signal, so he's now going to disconnect. And we're just going to continue to monitor the engine starting. So we now need to go to the overhead, turn on engine number four. Make sure it starts nicely. Cool. So, that engine's now starting up. We see we've got the fuel there. We don't want to spend too much time as we don't want to burn too much fuel on the ground. Has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Cool. He's going to give us a nice, safe flight, so he's off now. There he goes. There's him driving off. Bye-bye. Notice we're leaving the nose up whilst the tug is in position, so I'm now just looking for his hand signal to confirm the pins are out. There you go, there's the hand signal. We're good. Got the warning then, so that engine's now started, so we're going to relight engine number one. Once you push back, it's basically a game of getting the engine started as fast as possible. Whilst being safe, of course. So, hydraulics are now on, and the generator's now on for that engine. We can now shut the crossbleeds for the right-hand side, because of course they're not necessary. So crossbleeds one and two shut. We do, however, and still need the crossbleeds on the other side as we're trying to start the other two engines from the number two engine. Overhead then, and the fuel gets ignited. I then go to my before pushback checklist, so do it in the order I've been doing, it's slightly in the wrong order because it implies you start them all on stand. So this before pushback checklist is after he's disconnected, it's actually the after pushback checklist. So as the number one's engine starting, you go to the taxi lights first, because you don't want to you don't want to cut out all the power um, before that. So you want to turn on the taxi lights, which are these three at the end here, taxi and turn off lights. Inform ground at this point that you're, you know, you're talking to the talking to the tug. So that's why he was disconnecting there. We we'll talked to him. Make sure our parking brake is set. We're then going to confirm our deflection. Engine one started, so we'll just sort out that first, and then we'll go through it. So boost conditioning valve on, cross bleeds off, generator on. Electrical SSB closed. We'll go back from the start. Electrical SSB closed. The galley stuff we turned on. The water heater we turned on. So that's now good for departure. So we need to do a flight control check. So we're looking down here at this graph here and see if it moves as we move our side sticks. Sorry, our yoke. 
It certainly does. So we can now set the nose down to its taxi position. So we're going to the 5 degree. I have a button set to it on my uh, side stick, but you can just click on the side there, click on the position you want it, and it'll just move to that position. We're looking at the nose going down now. Flight controls confirmed. Before taxi checklist, we're now back in line with the checklist positions, so we, we do now do this before we taxi. The nose wheel steering needs to be checked. You check. It's free, that's just with moving the rudder. Uh, you can set it to nose wheel steering as well. Engine anti is off, master one panel, nothing. The trim, set it slightly up, not too much up, about half a half degree up. So, we now head over to the back of the engineer's panel before we taxi, turn on the brake fans. Engine scheduled to fly over, so we drag that to the left there. Uh, and the engine idle switch low, yeah, that's good. Trim's all set, this is all, we've done this, this is good. So taxi checklist. So on the taxi checklist, you now want a really spark rate. You get your clearance from the controller. You'll hear an annoying beep as I start throttling up. It's warning me that the plane's rolling away. Of course, if you apply a little bit of throttle, you start trundling it. What you now want to do is do a test control. Test if you can move the nose wheel steering. We can. Apply a little bit of brakes, see if they work. My brakes work. We're happy, so. A bit more throttle to get us rolling again. We go in the outside view and see that we're beginning to move in concourse. Looking lovely in the... Uh, land or livery. Okay, into the flight deck then. Not, not a very long taxi out to 27 left, so you want to make sure you straight away, as soon as you taxiing, get going with the taxi checklist. So, number one, cargo fuel transfer. So, Concorde requires a trim constantly, so you want to click trim takeoff. Concorde requires the fuel to be moved constantly, because that's why there's an engineer in this aircraft. So, engine rating mode takeoff. Yep, engine rating mode takeoff. You're not looking to switch, can you switch? Engine rating mode, you're just looking for the flyover and that the secondary air doors are closed, and then you're in basically in takeoff rating mode for um, departure. So I'm going a little bit quick for the corner. One thing you do need to know is then, um, sorry, when turning Concord, you're sat 30 feet ahead of the nose wheel. So it does require a bit of an overshoot. I tend to time it with the sort of iPad symbol. Um, on the first officer's side, that's where I tend to turn from. And I'm just sort of keeping that fairly in line with the taxi. We're going outside, you can see my nose wheel is now pretty perfect. So that's the yeah, that's definitely the marker to use for the initial turn. Initial turn, start turning with the iPad thing, keeping it in line. However much turn you require to do that, keep that through the whole turn. Uh, so then, auto ignition, auto throttle. That's these four, and then um, auto throttle, auto ignition on. Sorry, tracker are going a little bit wrong there. But again, overshooting it for this one too. You've got to remember, you seem like you're on the grass. If you have a look outside, the nose wheel is in fact very much on the tarmac. It's just Concorde. So at this point, you'll have been given your tax clearance. You're taxing out to the runway. It might be busy, other people around. I'm doing this off fat sim just for the simplicity of being able to do whatever you want. Um, so I recommend flying Concorde first time off fat sim for sure. And then second time, when you next want to do it. Um, go on back sim. So I let it go to about halfway through this window before making my turn on the left. Um, it's sort of just guesswork really to where you want to put it, but that's um, that's mine. Throttle master, check main slash alternate. Uh, so what we did that earlier, it now wants it in the main position. So if you put it to the alternate position, um, make sure you put it to the main for departure. Drain master heaters, have a look overhead, they are on. Engine flight rating, climb, into the climb position. Pressure static heaters, 1 and 2. ADS engine probe heaters on. Number 4 limiter, 88%. That automatically gets set. Air conditioning panel has been checked. We now have to do some clever stuff. Mid travel 4, these are all just anti skid system, no lights. You're looking down here. You're looking if you have done the checklist correctly, these ones where it says like checked, you want to check through them to be realistic, but they will be set. And lots of them, I can be honest, I don't quite know where they exactly are. So, just check them, give a rough check, make sure you've got the main important thing is you've got no warning lights up here that's your most important thing you can do. So approaching the hold then I'm just going to hold us before departure so I can go through the final things I didn't do, this is what I mean is you never get quite enough time on the taxi in Concord, so we'll put the brakes on we're going a bit fast here, bring to a stop at this point I'm just going to set the parking brake whilst I do this don't roll away engineer panel then, lots to do before departure Deer pumps here this one, on all of these ones on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make sure then. 
Air pumps 5A, 7A go on. Pumps here go auto. These pumps we don't touch. This pumps we don't touch. We leave everything like that. We've just turned on the D-air for all of them, making sure. This D-air here needs to go on. I missed that. But I always, you, you want to make sure you don't miss these, otherwise when you take off you get a really annoying lean to the right. I did it on stream once, you probably find it. That's where we went uh, JFK T3. Annoying lean to the right, that's when I forgot to flick a switch. So make sure you don't do that. You're now going through a before takeoff checklist. So looking to the overhead, we're going to turn on all the lights. Bam and bam. The transponder needs to be set on, so if I look down. Pedestal view. We set it to 1, 2, 0, 0, because I've got no ATC online, or 2000. We turn both switches on. That's your mode C. That's your transponder on. The brake temperature warning light. There's no warning light, so we're happy with that. The takeoff monitor gets armed. And the reheats will turn on when we get onto the runway. So we're going to re-spark re and brake. You hear him making his call for 3, 2, 1 now. We're ignoring that. Um, you do your own 3, 2, 1. Um, now cool and you do your own noise pavement after one minute of throttle with afterburners they've fixed it in v2 but they still haven't fixed the cool outs because the cool outs are far too late you'll be doing about 400 knots at about 10,000 feet by the time it goes um, noise pavement again with the 3 two, one now so we don't want to you don't want to listen to him do your own one um, because set the chrono earlier so what we're going to do when we get up to the runway with the afterburners um, armed which I'll do in a minute you're going to click, you're going to throttle up, so I take my hand off the side stick for this one, I throttle up to full, and I click that when I get to full on my throttles. Um, you want to make sure you click that, and then it'll time how long you are with Afterburner on, and you want to have a quick glance at it when you're sort of taking off, flying up. Um, and you want to have a quick glance at it, and when it gets to about a minute, sometimes just under a minute, if it's 55 seconds or so, that's fine. You want to make sure you don't, try not to exceed 250 knots, if you need to pitch up slightly more to to um, avoid breaking 250 knots, go for it. Um, just don't um, try not to break 250 knots. You can break it a little bit. I sometimes you know go 255, 254. Um, cause it's difficult. It's div really difficult to keep the speed below. But don't worry too much. Okay, so we're here, sat on the runway. Then takeoff is armed. Ah, uh, right. Takeoff monitor is armed. Apologies about the warning light. Armed, um, we're happy to go. We've got our vertical speed set to 2,500 for the departure. We're looking to rotate nicely when it says, just looking to start rotating at VR, gently allow into the air. So, three, two, one, now. Here we go. So lots of rudder input here. I have to do lots of rudder input to keep it straight because it really likes to wander around Concord. It's using right rudder, bit of left rudder. Power set. Power set. We're happy. Speed's building. Just keeping an eye on it. I've got slight stick forward. There's V1. Keeping stick forward. Very bumpy runway. B1, rotate. I don't know why it's calling out the feet there. Gently up into the air. There you go. I didn't rotate a little bit too quickly there. You want to keep the nose not too steeply up. And then we're just trying to keep the positive rate of climb we have going. The gear are going up. The gear have travelled up. So the afterburners on there. There's the speed building. So I'm climbing now about 2,500, 3,000 feet per minute. 3, 2, 1, now. There you go. So I'm turning off my afterburners. Reducing our climb rate to about 1,500, 2,000 feet per minute. Let's just turn that down slightly. We're just going to continue on. Slowing it down, backing off the throttle slightly there. Go to keep the pitch of the nose up. I've got the flight director on. I'm going to arm the auto throttle. So it'll now hold 250 knots. I don't have to touch it. Turn off our takeoff monitor. Allow it to climb nice and slowly. There we go, holding the nose nicely. Waiting for that radial to come across. That's that radial there, starting to come across any minute now. There it is, coming across. Wait for it. Still coming across, just holding that heading. It's going to come across pretty quickly and then we're going to go straight a minute. As soon as we get centred with it, we're going to go right to 268. So you have to watch this. This is a difficult part, so just keeping that climbing. 
There's the turn left, so we're rolling it left to track with the VOR, ignoring the flight directors at this point, so keeping the vertical flight director, but not the lateral one. Level the wings, go straight, and I'll pull that out, because we'll need to turn right 268 in a minute. So, there's 7 DME, right 268, which is there. Level out, we'll go track heading. It should now try and track our heading. The one I've set. We're descending slightly there. I lost the uh, vertical during the turns. So there we go. Pitching it back up again. We're at a heading hold. Altitude choir and vertical speed. And we can whack on the autopilot there if we want to. This is the point I said where we can turn on the autopilots and you can set it up. Now as we're heading between the London VOR, we can start to tune in Compton. Because we're on heading hold, aren't we? We need 114. Uh, the small 35. 3,000 feet. And we need to have a radial of 281. Two eight one inverted. So we're still climbing through. We're climbing up gently now. 3,500 feet. We would only be cleared up to 6,000. Because I'm flying now, I'm going to go up to 28,000, which is our subsonic altitude level. allowing it to speed to hold. We would we'd request high speed, but in most cases you won't be allowed it, so you're just going to have to hold the speed. We'll turn off the nose wheel lights. Make sure the afterburners are off. Wrap a bit off. Takeoff monitor is off. We'll start to turn off the exterior lights, because that is our final couple of checks. So looking for the ch change here, our flyers up to Compton, and then once we get to Compton, I will uh, end our little tutorial there. And for the rest of it, I recommend going watch Maverick um, 104, as that he has the rest of it. I'll put the link to his video in the description, but you can watch from here on with his video, as that explains it very well. Right. The radial has been set, so we're going to push it in. We're going to track heading. We're going to keep our 268 on there. The switch should be set to the rad position. There you go, so it's tracking heading. Because I'm on track heading mode on the autopilot, it's going to try and locate. And we're now going to switch to VOR lock. It's going to lock on that VOR of Compton. Passing through 6,000 then. I'm going to dial in 350, because that will be our through 10,000 speed we're going to climb to. We can turn off the lights and things in the f out exterior lights off. Lovely coming out through the clouds. We can have a look outside. Sometimes you see the mega steep angle of attack there on Concord. Which will be alleviated by, as I go now, trim for flight. flight. As he trims for flight, you'll see the nose pitching down slightly. But basically, when Concorde's below 350 knots, it really flies like a pig. So, we're now going to go ICA Choir, slightly earlier than 10,000, because you'd be asking for high-speed clearance. Assume we get given high-speed clearance. We're now going to lower the nose to about 1,700 feet per minute climb rate. Just reducing that a little bit. The nose should pitch down. There you go. Sometimes it's a little slow to respond. Right, it's pitching down there. So what we're now going to do is going to raise the nose. If we keep dropping it slightly. Sometimes you have to re-click re, re it to get it to follow the vertical speed. Anyway, we're going to bring up the nose and quite quickly followed by the visor just holding on for a minute there, waiting till we get to 10,000 above 300 knots I put the visor up 10,000 feet there's 10,000 feet, there's 300 knots, the visor coming up there goes the visor you can see we're about to hit Compton at which point we will then activate INS navigation. I'll just show you how to do that. Turn on our radar at this point. We should have done it slightly before. By the radar, we want the range to about 30. So we can just see the aircraft around us. There's 350 knots. We have a look outside now. You see it's a much less angle of attack. Climbing nicely away there. Um, yeah. So everything, for the next video, everything uh, Maverick does on his 
see Phillips Siva um, do in our INS on the aircraft. Um, when he does the updates, which you'll see him doing at Compton and stuff, you don't need to do them. So now we pass through Compton, we need to switch to INS navigation. See it rolls us right. We then switch this to INS, and you can now see 30.1 miles to our waypoint number two uh, of Malby. Climbing nicely then, we're just allowing it to climb up to 280 gently at its own rate with about 350 knots. When we get to about 20,000, I'll increase that to 380 knots. Looking for Mach 9.5. I call it a fade out now then. So thank you very much everyone. If you'd like to see any further on tutorials, please do comment down below. If you'd like to see anything else, let me know. Um, yeah, and please hit the like and subscribe. We're growing 135 subscribers, so please keep it going at the time of recording this was um, so thank you very much everyone uh, I'll catch you again soon for now goodbye